Hello, thanks for joining me. Just a quick video this time. Uh, SpeedyB had asked me if I'd wanted to take a look at the new stack, and after checking out the uh, write-up for it, uh, I decided I would, because it actually looked pretty good. Uh, and then I'm also going to talk about uh, why there haven't been very many videos from me for a while, and when you'll start seeing some more. Uh, but first, let's uh, take a look at the new SpeedyB stack. This is the... Uh, V3, 50 amp of the F7. This is how it comes uh, packaged. So there's uh, information for wiring in the app and uh, contact if you need any help. And the flight controller looks like the regular BDB sort of style. Uh, well, let's look at the ESC first. So it's 50 amp rated. It's obviously got a uh, CNC'd heatsink. I like how the uh, power tabs are done there, so you get some really good connection through all the layers in there. And double sided, so you don't have to worry about solder dripping over. But that's the one thing I do see on the side here. I mean, it's it's as long as you're experienced at soldering, it's not a big deal. But for those that are sort of new to it, I'd say you'd want to be careful when you're soldering here that you don't get a solder blob drip over and touch one of the MOSFETs on the bottom because that'll just short everything out. But other than that, the, uh, you know, the, the soldering layout for the pads all looks pretty good. Uh, looking at the other side, it's, uh, I believe, F4 processors for the, for the ESC. And it looks like they're... It looks like it's uh, raised up, so it's on a separate on a separate circuit board from the uh, MOSFETs. And I think that's done to help uh, clean up the uh, electrical noise uh, for the microcontrollers. It's a pretty weighty ESC, so you can tell it's got some good, it's a good amount of copper in the traces there. And this, they say this is rated at uh, a real 50 amps. So 50 amps per motor. Being an F4 processor, it uh, supports the newest BL Heli 32 stuff, as well as 128 kilohertz PWM, if you want to use that for your, your smaller quads. Uh, and it's also got a TVS protective diode to, I believe this kills voltage spikes. So when you're plugging in, or if you're, uh, if you're using it for racing or even for whatever kind of flying, even long range, and you smack into a branch and you get that big spike to the ESC, or you smack into a gate because you're racing, that'll help protect the uh, the spike from hitting the, the electrical components. So that's pretty nice to see. I, you don't see that all the time on ESCs, or you don't see that very often on ESCs. Now, looking at the flight controller, one of the first things that, well, let's see, the first few things that really stood out to me that I liked is I really like seeing the VTX wires in the back because me, my long range quads, I'm always, I always put the VTX in the back. And uh, one of the other things that really stood out to me was that this has 512 megabytes for the black box. So even if you're doing long 20 minute long range flights, you're still going to fit like an entire long weekend of flying long range and you'll you won't fill that up you'll be able to black box every single flight and that's something i've never seen on a flight controller before usually they're i think 32 meg is the biggest i've seen before so 512 megabytes half a gig of uh, memory for your black box and of course it's this is a speedy b flight controller so it's all uh, set up to go and work with the speedy b app with uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth so that you can update the motors, um, the BL Heli firmware uh, wirelessly. You can do all your all your beta flight adjustments wirelessly. And let's see, one of the other things that caught my attention is that they have it all set up for using plugs for all of the inputs. Uh, so there's, it looks like there's a ton because there's uh, these four are all for LEDs. 
which kind of works out. I'm going to try using my, uh, I got a set of these six LED things that go on the arms or whatever. So I can just plug those into there. And then there's a plug for each of the other things. There's one for uh, receiver, camera, uh, DJI setup, VTX, and uh, GPS. And it's even got, for the GPS, it's even got the SDA and SCL. So you can plug your whole uh, compass and GPS all in one plug there. And the LEDs are, you can adjust the mode or colors of the LEDs by using the boot button. Uh, and for me, because I'm, uh, I'm going to install this on a long range quad, uh, it's got a barometer, this little little metal looking square rectangle there with a little tiny hole in it. So it's got the barometer in it. Another interesting thing they've done that I haven't seen before is a battery level indicator. I believe it's uh, it's, it displays the power level of your the lipo that you're using your flight battery uh, using the four bars. So if it's all four bars, it's full. If it's down in the bottom the bottom one or the bottom two, you know your your battery is empty. So even if you forgot your uh, lipo checker at home, you just plug it into your quad, check out this light bar, and you know if it's a used battery or not. That's a pretty handy feature. And I don't know if you've seen my uh, video about the SpeedyB adapter um, and sort of about the SpeedyB app. There's lots of uh, neat features that you can do now with the, the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi over the, the SpeedyB app. You can pretty much do all your upgrading for firmwares and change your motor directions and all that sort of stuff now. All wirelessly with your smartphone or a, an iPad. And it's, it's actually pretty nicely packaged too. It's got a separate little compartment here now for all the accessories. <clears throat> so it comes with a 1500 microfarad low ASR capacitor. Of course you get a XT60, a couple extra gummy spacers and some uh, nylon nuts because the stack comes with the spacers already uh, installed on them, which is nice. They even give you screws for your stack for mounting with a spare. Oh, and then there's your your wires for the, the micro connector for the stack to the ESC, and I believe this one's for DJI. Sorry, I still fly analog, so. And then there's an assortment of other cables to help with the uh, the sort of plug-and-play feature of having all the different plugs on it. And I think it, the way it's slid, set out here, it's not going to be probably 100% solder-free. You're going to have to do at least a little bit of soldering. But there is a good assortment of wires here. There's the six pin here with another six pin header so you can rewire them your, the way you need to for, uh, this would be for the GPS and compass. This one I'm guessing would probably be for your receiver. So you'd plug it into the flight controller and then wire this back to your receiver. Then there's two different ones. I believe these are both for camera. So you plug into the flight controller and then it goes into your camera and has a connection for the uh, camera control as well. So two different sizes of those. And then two other uh, four pin wires for hooking up accessories. So one of these, I guess, would be for your VTX. I'm not sure what the other one would be. Maybe a spare for uh, another way of, the other one's probably a spare for another way of doing your camera or VTX. Looks like it comes with everything that you'd need there. The other thing that would be nice to see in, in this packet would have been, um, it would have been nice to see some three wire plugs with like six or eight centimeters of length on them that you can attach to LEDs. But other than that, it seems like all the wiring stuff you need is here. And that'll definitely make it a bit easier if you don't like soldering. You can do some, uh, you can do a bunch of just using plugs rather than soldering all the individual wires. I'll probably use plugs for my LEDs and 
mostly solder uh, solder most of the other stuff. Well, I'll use the plug for the ESC to flight controller, of course. And I'll probably solder most of the other stuff because actually, like I was saying earlier, I like the layout they've got here for the uh, for the solder pads. So I'm not sure which build I'm going to put this on yet. I think I, I might possibly rebuild my Falcon 7 build and use uh, use this. All right, so now a little bit about what's uh, been going on with the channel. So I haven't been doing very many videos lately. I've been really focusing on uh, uh, working on another frame. I've been trying to do another uh, another cinematic sort of frame, but this one's meant to be a little more of a short range, mid range, uh, faster flying thing. But there'll be some more about that uh, that new frame. Oh, probably in another month or two because I'm. I'm only just getting into the testing. I still got to make another change to the frame and order another one. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, but I've just gotten back from a week away for uh, work. And I'm just about to go now away for a week on holiday. So there's still going to be a bit of a, uh, a lull in my videos here for a bit. But uh, the good news is by the time I get back from holidays, I should have a bunch of more brand new flight footage from uh, brand new locations. And I'll probably try to also record some uh, some talking video stuff, like maybe going over my um, my video or a transmitter setup or what I keep in my bag, you know, that sort of thing. I'll try to record that while I'm out in the wild for some better background. Thanks very much for watching. That's all for now. I'll see you next time.